loud. All right, I need to make some amps, different amp sounds. This is called wide power. Unfortunately, we're not in stereo, so you can't hear that, but it's like massive. It's, it's just nice and spread. Um, let's see. I also need some like cleaner amp sounds. Like, uh, let's see, classic rock. Um, let's see, black, let's see, Malcolm Rhythm. That's good. All right, duplicate and come up with another one. Let's see, what else? Uh, um, classic rock. Jeff at Ronnie's, what's up? Nah. Uh, let's see. A lot of love. Yeah, that's a guy like that one. You can add. Yeah, that's a pretty good sound. I'm using uh um what, am, what software am I using? Uh, I'm using Logic and Guitar Rig, which is native instruments. In fact, I need to update all my native instruments. I usually just go native instruments complete. And it's like a thousand bucks, but it's, I mean, the complete's more than that, but to update is like a thousand dollars. I think I looked at it and it was like, oh man. But it's, it's amazing how much they change things and update things and they add all sorts of new stuff. So, anyway, how's everyone doing? Let's see who we have here. Class is in session, and I've got an electric guitar in my hands for a change. I'm going to pick up the, the, um, the capo and thing some more, but I want you to kind of uh, maybe re-watch some of those videos if you want or whatever. Uh, make tests for yourself. Um, you, could, you could do what you know I did as a kid when I was learning my fretboard. You could write down names of chords um, for the different capo positions, and on, a, on like cue cards and then or on uh, note cards and uh, just kind of shuffle them and randomize them and then go okay B flat okay where's B flat you know that kind of thing um, that would be really helpful because like I said it's really really good to know what chords you're actually playing I um, mean that's going to come into play a little bit here too because one of the great things about power card power chords is they're kind of cheaters you know kind of cheater chords but not really I mean if 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 every song, every rock song was full bar chords and we were using par, power chords to emulate them, then I would say, yes, they're cheating. But no, most rock songs are power chords. So even the source is, is the simple cheater chord. So, um, and it's really not a cheater chord. We'll, uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. There's a reason for power chords. Um, and then, um, and I love this format because I... I haven't done a video on power chords. I should, probably should. I did a video on um, super power chords, and I'll show you those. I think I call them super power chords, and I kind of created these myself. Um, and it's a really kind of a cool power chord if you have the reaching ability. It's a little difficult to play, but it, they sound great. Um, and then, um, but I love this format because I can kind of go into detail and I can answer questions and things like that, and we can. Um, uh, we can have a little bit of a discussion, um, but we're going to try to stay on, on point, talk about power chords. Um, like I said, one of the reasons power chords are kind of uh, popular is really you only need to know how to um, play or find the notes on the bottom two strings. Um, and, you know, I've said this before. If you know the bottom two strings, you technically know 50% of your strings because... The bottom string is the same as the, the top string. So if you know that this is F, you know this is F. If you know this is B flat, you know this is B flat. If you know this is E flat, then you know this is E flat. Um, I like this guitar because you can actually see the markers. So you can tell what fret I'm at, which is really nice. Um, and so um, hopefully at the very least what you'll get out of this is an, and we may, I make, I may quiz you on it. They're, they're, I have to put the tape back on, but this is the, the mug you can buy on my uh, YouTube channel if you don't have one already. I think it's hilarious. I'm, I'm, I'm hawking wares now, right? But I can tape on this. And uh, so maybe if you're having coffee with your spouse or significant other, you could tape over this so that 
they listen carefully to your conversation as at coffee. <laughs> so anyway, I think it's pretty funny. You can get t-shirts made on it too. I, I don't know that was, so, uh, <laughs> somebody did get a t-shirt. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, let me just see who's here. Uh, Keith, Roger, Bob Schumann. Awesome. Ed, good to see you. Pepper, good to see you. Uh, Gary, of course. Um, always good to see you. Bruce, we got an administrator. Uh, let's see. AJ, great to see you. Um, don't want to miss any. David Sillers. Bonnie, of course. If, if, if uh, Jim is here, there's Jim. Okay. Um, they're inseparable. Uh, oh, Mark. Hey, Mark Reagan. How's it going? Good to see you. Oh, hi. Hi from Kansas City. My daughter lives in uh, Joplin, or actually now Webb City, which is just north of Joplin. Uh, I saw Keith already. Anybody new? Let's see. Oh, uh, Den Dune. Oh, Den Dune. Yep. Den Dunn. Sorry. I've seen you before. You're familiar. Uh, with power chords, if you drop your pinky off the octave and down one string, uh, you get a major ver inversion. I think that's what it's called. Uh, if you drop your pinky down one string, no, that would be a sus. Uh, here, it would be a major, yeah. Here, here it would be a major. You're right. Um, and that's a nice inversion, too. We're going to talk about that, though, too. We're going to talk about a little bit about tone. Uh, I have a book of Cohen songs. A lot of the chords are written as actual chord, not the shape you'd play with capo. I've been looking at it since Monday. Yes. That, and yeah, and that's often the case. I, you know, uh, I oftentimes you'll see books where they, um, uh, they will, um, um, put capo, you know, position and where the all that kind of thing too. What I don't like is when they actually have a really long chord thing and they have the capo on there and the chord it's like, it's just a waste of space and then you have too much music. Okay. So, uh, oh, so is, 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 uh, is Jim not paying attention? Come on, Jim, pay attention. All right. So let's see who we got. We got 30. Okay, cool. Um, feel free to say hi in the live chat if you can. If you're, if you're on your phone, that might be difficult. Uh, I'm going to check my tuning real quick. And um, so basically power chords... Oh, okay. Uh, power chords are what I would notate. And I remember like a long time ago, they might say, it might say on a chart or like a chart, it might say G power chord, like literally written out G power chord. I'm like, there's got to be a better way. This just take forever. If you, the whole song were power chords, you'd be writing out the word power chord a thousand times. So I, I kind of started using five because I said, well, if a G7, you know, is a G a G uh, triad with a seventh, a G5, maybe I could just say, okay, that was my shorthand. Um, and that's common now. And I don't remember if I saw it somewhere or if I just kind of came up with it on my own. I know, um, you know, it. I, I taught for years. So when I was teaching, and at one point I was in Indiana, I was teaching, I had 40 students a week, 20 hours a week. And I had to get, in a half hour, I had to figure out a song, um, get it down on paper, and have the kid playing it a little bit anyway, or get them started on it um, all within 30 minutes, which was very difficult sometimes. Um, and stay on schedule, man. You had to stay watch that clock because it was like a doctor's office. You know, you go to the doctor, if you get an afternoon appointment at three, you know you're not seeing him till four because <laughs> he just keeps going longer and longer and longer. So I, I tried to avoid that. Um, but having shorthand like G5 uh, was was helpful rather than having to write G power chord. Cause I remember writing G power chord out and I was like, why am I doing all this writing? It's a waste of my time. So typically a power chord can be as little as two notes or three notes. You, pretty much you'll see both about equally. Maybe, maybe the three note one is more common. Um, I've printed up uh, this so I, I can fill this out and I'll probably go ahead and show you um, an E string based power chord an A string bass power chord. And I'll go ahead and show you how you would play it on the D string because it would be, the fingering is different, okay? And you might as well have that information. I use those power chords all the time. Um, so.
These are all power chords. I'm gonna to touch my face so we can all take a sip. If I touch my face, we have a drinking game here. Um, if I touch my face, if I refer to myself as the third person, if I use air quotes, if I drop my pick, it's a sip. If I drop a thumb pick, it's two sips because you really shouldn't drop a thumb pick. Um, if I say I had a band in high school called, there's a sip. If I mention the fact that I played all the guitars on Apex Legends and I just did some yesterday, a bunch yesterday, so. Um, and I just got my check for it, which I'm taking a sip for that one. Um, eh, let's see what other, there's some other rules. Oh, if I say there will be a, a quiz on it, you can take a celebratory sip. If I leave the room, you can take a sip. I don't think I'm going to have to leave the room today, hopefully. Um, so power chords, we can start out with a two note power chord because it's, it's, uh, um, and I'm going to show you the three note power chords, uh, but we can simplify it to a two note power chord. And what a power chord is, is a root generally and a fifth above it. Now the fifth interval, that is boom, oh, e, oh, right? Oh, e, oh, what's that from? Oh, e, oh, oh, e. It's probably been <laughs> quoted in a contemporary rap tune or something, but that's from, that's the, uh, uh, that's the Wicked Witch of the West's uh, Minions uh, marching song, right? <laughs> So that's the sound of a fifth. Now, the way you can think of a fifth is it's five scale tones up. And if we use a major scale, it would be one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to start with the G5. Yep, Wizard of Oz, we're good. Okay, another sunny day inside. Oh, hey, Charlie, how's it going? Good to see you. Andrew. Yes. Yeah, power, like a power chord down here. See power chord. Yeah, that's not unusual. We're gonna keep it simple, but yeah, I probably I'm gonna give you options too. All right. So um, now here's the thing. I don't know that power chords would have ever been utilized, or they would have been utilized a lot less if um, guitar players hadn't started distorting their amps. And initially, they would distort their amps just by turning them up so loud, and I remember doing this, that you would get a combination of power amp distortion, speaker distortion, uh, preamp distortion. Uh, you know, you, a, distortion can happen anywhere along the line. And if you just crank everything up to 10, and we call it diming it, and the boys call it dime. If you dime the amp, you're going to get distortion. If you put a distortion box in front of it, they got fuzz pedals, things like that. Then what started to happen was that Bar chords started to get a little too, because keep in mind, whether you hear it or not, there's a bunch of overtones on that note, okay? And this, now you have two pairs of overtones. And by overtones, it's like the harmonics. There's a myriad of them. And they are all created at every fraction of the string. So in other words, at the halfway point, at the third point, at the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, one seventh of the string, one eighth of the string, one ninth, one tenth. Technically, it probably keeps going, but it gets so high you can't hear it. There's probably some there that we can't hear. So what happens when you, distortion really brings out these overtones and different types of distortions bring them out more, um, you know, overdrive, clean drives, less so than say distortions or fuzzes. And so, with the more notes you have playing, the more of these overtones are gonna start clashing with each other. And so when you, and this, this is not a hugely gainy sound that I have. It's pretty, it's pretty gainy. Um, but that third, the, the string, it's just too much. It's like the, and the overtones aren't, the overtones are perfect, perfect tuning. Um, and when you tune a guitar, you're not tuning to perfect perfect tuning. If you were to do that, it would be weird. Um, and they actually have guitars with the frets are slightly all jacked up so that you can play that way. And it sounds great. It sounds like, wow, that's pure. Uh, but we've accepted the sound generally of the guitar and its imperfections. Uh, but when you start multiplying every, all the, you know, the overtones for this note with the overtones for this note, it's just like, oh, it just gets messy. So simplifying the chord really brings the sound tighter and better. And so as, 
as guitar amps started to get louder and they turned up more and they started to put a, a preamp knob on amps because originally it was just a volume knob and that was it. And then eventually they started putting preamp knobs on there and you could crank and distort part of the amp before the, the power amp section. Um, uh, the, uh, then you, you start to notice that all the overtones would start to get in the way and make a mess. So they started simplifying the chords and that started happening in the 60s. Didn't really hear it in the 50s, although, you know, that was a common riff in the 50s, but that was more, and again, keep in mind, that's Johnny B. Good. Fairly clean sound on the rhythm on that. Um, let me make a let me make a clean sound so I have a um, uh, wait let me I can just duplicate uh, ba -dum -bum -bum. I think I've got it basic real basic it's back to, I think it's called basic clean let's see how clean it is yeah too much reverb and compression but okay so um, that wasn't unusual. That was very common, and uh, so the, so the, it's not like the fifth, the power chord hadn't been invented, but it just got more and more use. I feel when once amps and, and guitar players started to use a lot of distortion, um, it really tightened up the sound. Um, you know, let's see, was it? Or, which someone mentioned? Uh, who was it that mentioned playing the fifth on the bottom? That's actually what. Um, Richie Blackmore did on Smoke on the Water. Uh, he's he's playing, I think, he actually starts with the two uh, middle strings open. But of course, everybody's a kid learning. Um, and even the bass doesn't do that. The bass is just... Right? It's just playing the G note. So you, it's cool because you can play both together. It's kind of fun. It's almost like a like a little study. It's almost like a jazz thing. Um, so, so that's so the the power chord. And let me get back to a. Okay, I'm not going to use that sound. All right, I'll stick with that one for now. Um, so power chord, so we again, we go one, two, three, four, five. So we got the root and the fifth, okay? So we have our first finger and our third finger. Our first finger is going to be on the root, so whatever note that is, that's the chord, okay? So if that's a G, then this will be a G5 chord. And if you want, you can add the pinky underneath there, okay? And that would give you a root, a fifth, and a root. Sounds like the cars, right? Oh, I, did I tune? A little out of tune. Okay, so I'm gonna write that one out. Now, the cool thing, like I said, is <laughs> guitar is one of those things where it can be, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, it's probably the easiest instrument to get started on. It's, I think, the hardest to master because I don't, there's too many styles to, of the guitar is prevalent in for there to be really someone who's mastered everything. I mean, Guthrie Govan's pretty close, uh, but uh, you know, Ingvi Malmsteen, you know, but most of these are players that, I mean, anybody, I, I, I try to be a, a, a jack of all, master of none. I mean, I would love to master, be a master, but I, 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 because of my work, I need to be able to play a lot of different styles. In fact, I just got a text saying, you play ukulele and I text it back and said, I have six ukuleles. I didn't want six ukuleles, but I have six. So, you know, yesterday I was playing heavy metal and today I'm going to be playing ukulele. So it's the nature of my job that I need to kind of be a, a jack of all. Now, um, so I'm going to write out the three power chords um, on the three different string sets. Um, and so, um, and again, everything I, um, everything I write out here, uh, I'll scan and post on the Discord under Tom's bookmarks. Thanks for setting that up. And so I've got three power chords based on three different bass strings, okay? Your three wound strings. Your bottom, your E string is wound, and I'm talking about on electric. On acoustic, you, the G string is also wound. But on electric, the, uh, the, the D string, the A string, and the E string are all wound. So we're gonna have our first finger on all of those notes, all of those strings, 
and we're going to come up with, so this is, um, and this could be anywhere. I'm going to put an X here for the fret because it could be anywhere. These are completely movable. And that's what makes one of the beautiful things about guitar. It makes it so easy is that you just, you learn one chord and you've learned 12. Okay. So this is E based. Um, this is A based. And this is D based. And the fingerings for all of these are going to be the same. The first finger is going to play the root. The third finger is going to play the fifth. And the pinky is going to play the other root. And I'm going to put a parenthesis around that that uh, pinky because you don't have to play that power chord. Okay? You can play a two note power chord. You don't have to play a three note power chord if it's too difficult. Remember I told you a story about my student that showed up when he had a hard time keeping his fingers together when he was playing power chords. He showed up and he had masking tape wrapped around his third and fourth fingers. He goes, look, I can do it now. <laughs> it totally cracked me up. He was like a high school kid. It was pretty fun. I do sometimes miss teaching one-on-one. -on -one. I'll tell you one thing that, and I always recommend it. If you, if you feel like you're, you can take on beginners, I would, I would teach. Yeah, it's another source of income, especially if you're retired or whatever. Um, for me, it was always a great way to hear about new music. I can't tell you how many bands I learned about bef before most people had, because 15, 16 year old kids, they just know what's happening. They, they know what's coming before anybody else does. It's like, man, check out this band. All my friends are talking about them. I'm like. The Foo Fighters, or no, well, that was not a good example because that, that one was, uh, one was The Killers. That was one. It was like The Killers. That's a weird name for a band. And, uh, and then uh, who were some of the others? The Foo Fighters was one, but it, when I saw who was singing lead, I went, well, yeah, of course, they're going to make be famous. So, okay. So these are the, these are the uh, three chords. You can see basically the only thing difference is uh, the, between the first and second one is that you're just on a different set of pair, strings. Okay, and then the top one, see, notice how your pinky has to come out. So we're going to practice all three of these right now. And we'll do them at the, um, uh, you, we do them at the third, we're going to do them at the third fret. Okay, um, so ultimately it would be nice if you could learn, um, okay, let me let's try to pick out some questions here too. Um, if you can learn the D, the notes on the D string as well, that will be that would be real handy. But for the short term, I wouldn't worry about. It. Okay, unless you already know your fretboard, then it's not an issue. Okay, so Vito had a question, and then uh, Art had or Leo had a question. Art had a question. Okay. Yeah, you could totally play. Uh, uh, the Art's asking. So is that how you play with only three strings? Sure. Uh, the guitar player for the President's of the United States doesn't he only have three strings? Or does he have four? I think he only has three strings. And the bass player only has two strings. Um, and they make it work. Um, as far as, uh, let's see, I got there was a question about songwriting. Let me get to that in a second, um, Leo. Um, uh, let's see. Vito, what was your question? I think I saw something about gain up there, but I, I kind of was in a thought and I didn't want to stop. Where did that question go? Dang, is it really that far up? Uh, sorry. Okay, Bruce is hipping me to a veto regarding volume versus gain. Oh, uh, what is gain versus volume? Volume is the volume is generally just the the, the sound level. So, like, I could play, I could play clean, really loud. If you have a really, like if you have a Fender Twin Amp, if you ever played through a Fender Twin Amp, I think it's 100 watts or 120 watts. Um, hard, you, you know, even crank that amp and doesn't distort very much. So that would just be loud. I can, I can have, like I can go to this um, heavy metal sound that's freaking giant and turn my speakers down to a whisper. And there's still a ton of gain and zero volume, practically no volume at all. So the, the, that's... Yeah, but if I turn up the volume... Then... So that that's a lot of gain. Then if I go to 
and and you can turn down gain just by turning down your volume knob. Usually, if if your if your uh, gain structure is receptive, see th it doesn't really clean up. This sound doesn't, and it's hard with digital in the digital realm. Um, but some of these sounds that I have programmed will clean up if you just turn down your guitar. I've also got a volume pedal that I can do turn down. And a lot of players will use one amp sound, one amp setting, and they will adjust with a real amp and real pedals. Particularly with a real amp, it's it's a lot easier to affect your gain and your tone with just the volume knob of your guitar. Okay, it gets a little thin. That's a much beefier sound. So I turned up, this is all the way up. And I go down a little bit. Start to clean up. Cleans up, cleaning up, but it's thinner. So I might go to the, if I were to do that, I might go to the neck pickup where it's gonna be a little woodier sounding, a little, a little beefier. exact sound the only thing I'm doing is I'm adjusting my my uh, guitar level and what that does is it doesn't so much change the volume in the room as much as it changes the amount of distortion kind of cleans up a little bit but it also thins out now on my telly you can actually have um, a capacitor I think it is put in uh, uh, between the volume pot and the output maybe is I, on my telly, I have that done so that I can turn down the volume, but the tone doesn't get as thin. Um, and so I should probably do that to all my guitars, but I, my tech does it. So. But he didn't do it to the, he hasn't done it to this. I don't think he's ever worked on this guitar. Um, this guitar is pretty bulletproof. <laughs> it's been through a lot and never had any work done on it. Um, all original, original pickups, everything. I lost the whammy bar, and then I had to order another one, and I ordered the wrong one, and then it's like... So I've, I've, and they're not cheap because they're stainless steel. They're like 25 bucks or something. Anyway, um, so let's see. And then there was another question about songwriting. Wow, 50 watching. That's awesome. Um, uh, another question about songwriting in power chords. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that I sit down and go, I'm going to write a song using power chords. Um, but I might sit down and go, oh, I want to write a rock song, and then it's just going to be populated with power chords. Um, so, yeah, you can definitely, uh, I mean, uh, any, song that <laughs> any song that uses power chords was probably w written with power chords. There may be, I mean, there are times that guys wrote songs on piano or guitar, acoustic guitar, and bang it out, and they go, okay, now let's turn it into a rock song, and their arrangement of it was all power chords. So that's, that's kind of... Uh, B Kitty's here. That's B Kitty's theme right there. Okay. <laughs> so, a Pepper's theme is. <laughs> okay. So here's the here's the power chord based on the six uh, six string. Okay, based on the E string, E based. I called it. See, I said E based because it's based on the E string. Okay. And then the A based one here is based on the A string, and the D based one here is based on the D string. I will scan this, put it up in Discord. I'm going to post the Discord link right now. Do I have Safari open? Okay. Uh, Discord, oops, Discord, discordapp.com. Um, here's the link to invite, copy. Okay, so if you're new to this, or you haven't done the Discord thing, but that I, I, any paperwork I create, I try to scan and send the PDF to uh, one of the pages there. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, Leo, I, I tried. Okay. Now, um, the so put your first finger on the bot on the bottom string, third fret. Your third finger on the um, the fifth fret of the fifth string and then your pinky right under that also on the fifth fret okay now again like i said you could just do two now here's a little tip about strumming it all right because we got to be careful not to hit all the other strings now i'm deadening i this part of my finger here okay is laid across those strings that can cause a problem though because if i go up here to the fifth fret 
create harmonics. So I still try to, I really try to tighten and moderate my right hand when I'm playing power chords. And here's the thing, if you're playing a three note power chord, for example, you can just, with your right hand, kind of try to hit the bottom two strings. And if you hit the third string, great. As you get better, you can probably really lock in and hit only three strings. Um, but it, at first you might have a tendency to go, which may not be a problem right there in G because you got an open G string right there and an open B. But if you go up to, if you're in a different key, it might not work. So you really do want to, you'll see a lot of guitar players, you know, they're using very tight right hand. Watch, watch rock players when they're playing and they're often hand, times their right hand is very, very tight as opposed to if we're strumming, we're really trying to hit all the strings almost, okay? So, acoustic guitar players, I mean, you know, strumming big chords. I wouldn't say we strum rock songs, you know? Uh, and so, um, it's one thing to play the bottom chord. This is the easier one. The next one, you're going to have to miss the bottom string. So you're definitely going to have to be tighter because it's really hard to, like, hit big strums and miss the the bottom string just so so that your bass root note is the fifth string now uh who was it that mentioned about putting the fifth on the bottom sometimes um that came about probably because so many players just, just went ahead and barred and they're just hitting it anyway <laughs> so, so they're playing a c power chord or c5 chord to simplify c5 and so i put my first finger on the uh, fifth fret third fret i mean sorry fifth string third fret my third finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string, and my pinky is going to be on the fifth fret of the third string. Okay? And you notice I'm just like, I'm resting my pick right there. Yeah, it's three, it's three, uh, it's three, the, and these are, these are their pickups. They made these pickups. These are not, you know, this came this way. It's called a Legacy Special. Um, so I think a Legacy would be three single coils and then the Legacy Special. This is from 80, uh, 97. So, um, like I said, this thing's been a, totally bold. From, I love the, uh, the whammy bar on this. Um, the only thing I had to do was I had to stuff the back full of cotton um, because I guess the pickups are pretty microphonic. And I would, if I did this, the, the, the springs for the whammy bar, which just keep ringing and it would come through the pickup. So I get these overtones from the springs, which is fascinating. Uh, so I just stuffed it full of cotton balls. <laughs> you don't have the problem anymore. <laughs> Pretty funny. Okay, so the, we got the G5 and the C5. Okay, we're gonna do the harder one. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. Okay, don't worry about this one too much. But I'm, you're gonna go down, you're gonna go fourth, uh, first finger on the fourth string on the third fret. And that's an F. And then we have a C and another F up here. So you're going to have to spread your pinky out. It, it does not have a push pull. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's funny because that kid that, w that I said taped his fingers up, he was doing it because his finger kept going like this. So it was making, <laughs> that's a really cool chord. That's not the one we wanted. Um, but that, if your finger naturally just kind of, your pinky kind of escapes and gets away from your third finger, then this is a perfect power chord. Now this is a nice bright power chord too. And again, you could always just go down to two fingers. Then three. Now, there's two types of movement that you need to master with power chords, all right? You need to mute, well, I, what would I call this? Uh, lateral, 
and latitudinal, <laughs> longitudinal, I don't know. It, you gotta go be able to go up and down the fretboard, right? And you gotta be able to go crisscross across the fretboard. Um, so what was that song? Um, what was it? Um, I always taught it to students. It was one of the first songs I taught them. Um, boom. Shoot. Shoot. It's foreplay by, by Boston, but I can't remember. And that would be sound better with maybe this. So I wonder if they have a Boston sound. Let me see. Okay, let me duplicate. What would they call it? Because, you know, they're not allowed to say Boston, uh, you know, when they name these patches. Okay, so classic rock. Okay, I'm in classic rock. Uh, let's see. Would there be in here? Octave in the Well, rock. It might be this one. <laughs> for some reason. That's a pretty cool sound. It's very left heavy. Hardly anything coming out the right speaker on this one for some reason. Let there be lead. No, I... ZZ 70s, that's going to be ZZ Top. Yeah, that's ZZ Top. Bro Van sound. Late Van Halen, maybe. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. So the sound that, that this kind of... Killing me. I taught that song so many times. I made more money off of that song than Boston did. Uh, <laughs> than Tom Schultz. Schultz. Shot, Schultz? Schultz? I always want to say Schultz, but I don't think it's... It's not Tom Schultz. Or is it? Schultz. I don't know. Um, so, let's see. Uh, yeah, I just... Yeah, basically every, every garage band. Um, The garage band sound, that, that sound, the, um, a lot of times is a rat, and there's a rat fuzz in this software that does a pretty good job at replicating the rat. That was like, the rat was like the cheapest fuzz, but it was like a fuzz gain pedal. It's kind of fuzzy and kind of gainy, super gainy. Uh, had a weird knob on it. The the um, the tone knob on a, on a rat it was weird. Um, but anyway, I digress. Um, I don't think I've ever owned a real rat. Um, okay, so the three power chords. And if you, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna change sounds. Okay, so um, like I said, there's two types of movement that you need to get down with the uh, pants, pants confirmed, Pepper confirmed them earlier, but just, you know. Uh, and there's no sippage if I, do, if I, uh, I'm touching my face so we can all take a sip. Our drinking game. Me wearing pants is not a sippable offense. <laughs> Me not wearing pants might be. Okay, so, you know, being able to go back and forth like this, you can practice that. Because that's difficult. That's more difficult than going. Um... Uh, Zeppelin tunes, you know, um, uh, let's see. That's an example where they, the, the, the power chord is an E power chord, but it's got the low E, and I'm not even sure if that's the right voice. Iron Man is, I'm 
pretty sure it's just lateral, all up and down the same string. Um, uh, the end of Stairway to Heaven. Is, is pretty much just lateral down. It's A5 to to G5 to F5, um, and it's all on one string. Um, like I said, the, the foreplay by... Um, the foreplay, foreplay is a great one. Like I said, if you really want to work on going up the neck and across the neck um, in the same song, foreplay is a great one. Um, are power chords used in other gen genres? Yes. Um, anytime you see... A uh, finger style guy, for example, who's like in dad gad or drop D or whatever, do this, okay? He's playing a power chord. In jazz, uh, I wouldn't say they don't exist. In classical music, I, okay, so here, let me just, let me hit you on this too, because um, what, when, when I studied music theory in high school, and again, I was in high school in the 70s, so rock music had been around for by, by the time I, I got to high school, rock music had been around for 20 years, which is weird to think because, and rock is, you know, you could almost make the argument that in some ways rock is dead. I mean, who, who's going to replace so many of these legacy acts? Uh, a friend of mine plays guitar for Bush, uh, and they're, they're, well, until COVID, they were still touring and doing pretty big shows. Um, uh, and there's a lot of bands like that, but once the Stones die, and once you know all these bands, Zepp Zeppelin isn't really touring anymore. But you know, once all the classic rock artists are gone, um, it may be like the doo wop bands where they just have people that <laughs> can play all the songs, and they get out there, and people will pay money to see all the Zeppelin songs played live by a really good band. I don't know. I mean, Pink Floyd doesn't tour anymore, but there are three or four different <laughs> Pink Floyd tribute bands that can fill stadiums. <laughs> it's insane. Uh, a friend of mine actually played uh, uh, Stevie D. Everybody called him Stevie D. Stevie De San De Stanislav is a great drummer. And he tours with David Gilmour and actually played with, I think he did play drums for Pink Floyd for a minute. <laughs> and so cool. You know, it's like, and he came out of nowhere. I mean, I think he went from... He was doing clinics for Roland V drums to touring with David Gilmore, like overnight. It's like, oh my gosh. Now I know it wasn't overnight for him, uh, but from the perspective of an outsider, it seemed like an overnight thing. So yeah, I definitely think power chords could show up in different genres. Um, uh, I uh, Pop music? I mean, I will use, I will use different voicings and things like that for power chords. Um, so, uh, like I said, right here you've got 12 chords, actually 24 because you could play a three finger power chord or a two finger power chord. And a two finger power chord is going to be a little bit faster. Because you have less drag, less resistance on the, on the strings because you have only two fingers pushing down. Um, and then the three finger one is going to sound a little beefier. Now, one trick, like if you're having a hard time, um, if it's just sounding a little muddy to you, then you can get rid of the fifth. And then I would call that an eight chord, not a five chord. Okay. And by eight, it would be an octave. Okay. So for example, um, uh, I think bands like, um, you know, more power pop bands of the of the '90s, uh, late '90s, early 2000s, like um, Lit and Bleak 182 is big on using octaves. Everybody's practicing. That's good. Um, so the <clears throat> so if you just take off your pinky and put your third finger where your pinky was, and then mute the middle string, that would those would be called eight chords. Okay, and uh, but also you could just call them octaves. And those are used in jazz all the time. <laughs> Wes Montgomery used them all the time on guitar. Uh, 
But the thing about that is I think it, it's a little more focused sounding, a little more pop sounding, a little more focused sounding, um, not as heavy. So if you don't want to, you know, um, I'm going to put X8 because it depends on what the, the bottom note is. But the hard part is, and it's not that hard, but the hard part is muting the bottom string. I mean, sorry, muting that middle string. But there, for example, is the E bass one. Okay, so whatever note that is at X, so if you're at the third fret, that would be a G, that would be a G8 chord. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and then the, sixth, the fifth string bass one, same thing. And then the fourth string bass one is going to be a, a stretch. And probably would use my pinky for that one. X, one, three, X, 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 one, X, four, X. Okay. So these are the, those are the three uh, versions on the three different strings. And again, the, the D bass one, you don't need to worry about that one so much initially. Okay. Don't worry about the, the ones in that column right now so much. Um, and again, I'll scan this and put it in the discord. <laughs> Derek, you're just going to have to watch again later. Thanks for watching in your truck, though. I don't have a truck, but if I did, I would probably, I should do one of these from, I could do one of these from my car. <laughs> I used to drive to school with a practicing guitar, and I had, the I had to roll down the window and have the guitar neck out. Because <laughs> there were, between my house and the school were lots of stoplights, and I just got tired of hitting red lights and just sitting there while the left turn things happened. So I was just like, it was at 80, 86th Street in Indianapolis. <laughs> it's just a million lights. I never got a ticket. I never got Talk about distracted driving. I still don't think that's worse, though, than having two dogs on your lap with their heads sticking out the window. And how that's not distracted driving, I have no idea. <laughs> So like I said, bands like Blink, um, I don't know that, uh, Green Day, they may be using two note chords. in E flat but I think they tune down a half step so this is actually where they play it if they tune down a half step see there you would add that third finger so you got you know get that beefier fatter sound um, and here's the other thing somebody was uh, shoot uh, Vito you were asking me about gain versus volume okay another thing is if you've got a if you've got a good reactive signal path okay like guitar amps are very reactive uh pedals some pedals are at reactive if they're digital pedals they're not going to be as reactive if they're all analog pedals meaning they're just um com uh, capacitors and things like that uh, then they'll be reactive if there's a tube in it or whatever they'll be more reactive to what you're sending it um, like that one s sound that I had up that was super gainy, um, when I turned down the volume, the gain didn't go away. But you'll notice like... The softer I play, and again, I'm working in a digital format um, that shouldn't be that reactive, but it's a pretty good signal chain, signal path. Um, and so uh, you do get some reactive sounds. It's not as realistic as an amp. But for most of what I do, nobody notices. It's not, I'm not, you know, a lot of, when I do records, I'm more likely to use real amps, okay? When I'm doing TV shows, games, and, and movies, uh, you know, things are under noise, dialogue, stuff like that. Time, you know, we, we call it music by the pound. It's more important to finish this song and move on to the next one, or cue, we call them in, in movie, call them. Finish the cue, move on to the next one. Um, it's more important to do that than to spend time getting sounds. You know, if, oh, no, let's try seven more amps before we take this cue. No, it's literally a 24-second cue, 
and it's under a motorcycle chase. So who's going to notice, you know, if I'm playing through a vintage Plexi Marshall with a 59 Les Paul, or if I'm playing a Squire into my Logic, it's not going. No one's going to notice. So uh, yeah, Green Offspring. Offspring uses a lot of gain. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the the power pop bands like Lit, and I always say Lit, but it, they're not. They were they had a couple hits, but uh, Blink was huge or is still huge. Blink, um, not 311, but you know you know the bands I'm talking about. I think I heard. You know, you hear a lot more of the octave thing out of some of those power pop bands. Now, also notice that I did my octave. I actually used my first finger and pinky. Uh, not sure why. Not sure why my pinky naturally gravitates towards there. Probably because I can easily fill it in with the, with the third finger. See? Practice both of those. Um, you can practice the octave either way, but but practice playing the octave. It's like. Uh, China Grove by the Doobie Brothers definitely uses a, a three string power chord. Good. Um, so yeah, th those are examples. Of, there's a million, and, and again, uh, let's see, Leo asking about songwriting. Yeah, they, they didn't probably sit down and go, oh, okay, let's do E. E. They probably didn't play it, you know, with open chords and go, let's now, let's make it a rock song by doing, no, they probably, she start out right there. Um, and immediately went to the power chord. It was the power chord is what inspired the song. Probably just sitting there going. Actually, the hook on that song, I, you, I I'm a big, like I love. It's it's like a it's like being a detective. Like what is the hook? What's the thing that that got people to keep listening to the song, right? And a hook doesn't have to happen at the top. The hook could be, uh, you know, like one hook that does happen at the top is. <laughs> Right? Or uh, that's another hook. And those are hooks. That's the hook of the song. It's not the melody. They don't ever sing either one of those lines in either one of those songs. Um, so a hook doesn't necessarily have to be a melody. I'd say about 50% of the time it's not the melody. Um, though when you're writing pop songs in particular, um, any song really, it should have a very, uh, it should have a, a, a melodic hook in the chorus. Uh, that's, you know, uh, you can get away with a one note hook, but there has to be something that brings the listener to that moment and keeps them listening. And I think the hook on China Grove, maybe that groove, I mean, that groove is, is iconic. As, right? But I think the hook to me on that song and the thing that, that had that song be composed you know, like they, they kept going with it in the studio, was the scratches. That. <laughs> That's the hook. It's like, the, it's like um, uh, Creep. I, th I always think the hook on Creep is when he goes. You know, right before when the power chords come in, uh, he, he hits the kun -kun, kun -kun. to me. And when I tried to describe it, because I didn't know who the band was, and I heard it on the radio, and I went to the I went to Tower Records and asked someone, I couldn't remember the name of the song, I couldn't remember a lyric, I couldn't remember anything except all I remember was like, man, it it sounded like a car engine was trying to start. It was like chunk chunk, chunk chunk, right? Um, the, there's a new there, there was a recent song uh, by was it Twenty One Pilots? Da, 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 right, that song that was from uh, some movie, uh, they had a similar kind of thing. It's like, it's cha-junk, cha-junk. But they did it like they took a vocorder and then used a guitar thing. Like I, it may, They may have sampled the, 
the Radiohead sound. I'm not sure. I, I would be fascinated to know if they did that. Um, but you could sample that and then play through a recorder, and you're at, they're actually saying a word. I'm not sure what they're saying. Uh, uh, what's uh, I can't play it, unfortunately. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Heathers. Uh, let's see, 21 Pilots. So, oh, Heathens. Oh, you. Oh, I'm sorry, you wrote Heathens. Sorry, you're right. It's he, he, You're right, 100% it's Heathens. Um, and what's the word they're saying? Do you, do, when that, you know, thing. But that's, to me, the kind of the hook. That's the thing that gets the... Yeah, Suicide Squad, very good. Um, what's the hook on Take 5? Take 5, the, the hook is the melody. Jazz, the hook is always pretty much the melody. Well, you know, although the hook on t Ed, the hook on take five is kind of the groove, right? You could have put any melody over that, um, and I'm gonna have to go to my clean sound. So we're getting off the <laughs> subject here, but that's all right. I'm gonna show you my super power chords. Okay, next, uh, and then I don't know what I'm gonna talk about next, but I do. I want to give a little break on the, on the. I want you to learn your. Um, Third position and first position for the, for the, um, um, uh, for the, um, shoot, uh, for the capoing. I want you to spend a little more time on that before we go to the second and fourth position. But that once we do second and fourth position, we're done. We're not going to do anything else on, on capoing. Um, let's see. Uh, was it? That's the hook right there. Yeah. If that's the same song you're talking about, Ed. Uh, yeah, that's the hook. The melody is a total. Such a great hook, but I think the hook, the way he, the way he played over five, because five, you know, you can do five is just like four, four, you can do it a million different ways. And five, four is kind of like, well, how do you, one, two, three, four, five, boom, da, boom, boom, da, you know, but he, but Dave Rubeck came up, boom, da, boom, da, boom, 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 da. Now that's the hook, right? As soon as you hear that, you're like, you are hooked. Literally, that's the origin of the term. How do you hook the listener? So, uh, how about major and minor triads? Well, okay, and I want to talk about that. I, I do really like using. Um, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't call them triads. I call would call them dyads. Um, I do like using them with. Um, I'm gonna go back to a, a rock sound, okay? But uh, so. And I'm not going to write these out because these are not these are more need to know, and it's kind of a fun thing. But triads are too messy. I mean, they're not bad, but I like a triad. I mean, a dyad. Sorry. So I'm playing the root in the third. So I'm playing uh, an A and a C sharp. So it's an A major chord. See, because with because because uh, uh, Jim Jim's point is when you have a five chord, it could be major or minor. You don't know because there's no third. Third is the note in the triad that tells you if it's a major chord or a minor chord. Okay. So if you don't have a major chord, like if you look at this bar chord, this is an A major. I'll turn down my gain a little bit so it's cleaner. Nah, not much. Going. Okay. That's major, that's minor. But if I don't ever get to that third string, you can't hear a difference between major and minor. Which is some ways it's part, part aids that simplicity uh, of a, being able to play guitar 
as a young kid or as a beginner being able to get up to speed pretty quick because so many songs, they don't have tonality. Now, the tonality is implied. Just because you think, you know... Not, these are not all major chords, they're all minor chords. They're, they're specifically chords. This is an A minor chord, triad, this is a G major, and this is G F major. But he doesn't, he doesn't need to play them. That's, the tonality of those chords is implied based on where those chords fall in the, um, in the key and the fact that the solo and every, everything else about um, Everything else is, is kind of lining up with uh, the key of C, which is what that song is in, or A minor. Some people might say it's an A minor. Um, so, uh, but this, this, and then I go up to the five chord, the A or the D, and then back to A and then up to E. I like that sound. The problem is if I go with a gainier sound, then it gets a little muddy having the, the third and the root so close together. All right, where are you guys? Uh, you're here and here. Okay. I don't like the sound as well with a lot of gain out. sound of that I like the sound of a, a pure power chord with that much gain but again if I go to a cleaner sound I, I definitely like the sound of the third in there and I could go minor so check this out I'll go um, let's see I'm in the key of A uh, so I could do F sharp minor mm, let me go up to the key of B flat so that I can go to G sharp mi or G minor okay so I'll go to the um, sorry I'm trying to get all my windows organized so I can see what you're saying and see what I'm doing at the same time okay so okay so like um, Here's the cool thing is I could go from this major dyad, the B flat and the D, to a, a G power chord. The top note stays the same, isn't that cool? That sounds like a Foo Fighters thing. That, or, and I could also go, like, I could go up to the E flat and then to the B flat. To the F, I could go. Dyad. Dyad. Power chord. Okay, now what would I call that? Okay, so this note, this chord, it's just the root and the three. So I would call that, in this case, it's a B flat. That's a B flat right there. Ooh, I should test. I should, I should quiz you. There'd be a quiz on this. I should quiz you on the notes of the bottom two strings. Okay. We could take this to another day. Anyway, uh, I would call this a G, I mean, sorry, a, um, I would call this a B flat three. And if it was minor, I might say B, B flat minor three. So we, E and A strings, exactly. Uh, in fact, um, the super power chord thing, you know what, I'm not going to talk about that. I mean, I'll show it to you, just so you know it. If you if you can if you can get it, you'll get it right away. Um, and basically, all I do with the super power chord is, um, and it really only do, generally do it on the, uh, on the E string, um, and that is to take the fifth up an octave. Okay, so here's a normal G power chord. So here's a root, fifth, and root. I take that root up an octave, so, so it's here, and I get this. So what it does is it kind of gives you that five, root five thing, but it also gives you that octave thing on the bottom. And I, 
just came up with that because I wanted to take a, this power chord and make it brighter. In fact, on, on gainier sounds, I think it sounds really good because it kind of gets, a, gets away from the mud and gets, uh, spreads the voicing out a little bit more. And I can even go... That's kind of, if you if you've got that down, you can totally. <laughs> That's funny. Very good, David. Um, let's see. Uh, all right. So let's go ahead and do the quiz. I'm going to change my sound back to a more reasonable. Uh... Is this a Zeppelin one? So uh, let's work on the E string first, okay? And if you remember, um, your where the half steps are between E and F and B and B and C. And I used to tell back when a, <laughs> neither one of these things are a thing anymore. Uh, so kind of, uh, but E F Hutton and B C as in before Christ. They don't say that anymore in science. They say BCE, before the Common Era. They're trying to basically get rid of any kind of religious uh, connotations in any sciences. I guess it offended people to have to write BC, so whatever. Sorry people have thick, thin skins, but, uh, you know, that's the reality of some people. So I probably have thin skin. I don't know. That's what they should change the name of the Redskins, <laughs> the Washington Thin Skins. That's my team. That's my team, the Redskins. And I'm like, actually, my wife is part Blackfoot Indian. But I saw that the Washington Post even did a survey years ago, and they said only 90% of Native Americans didn't have a problem with the name. Um, I, you know, I always thought, you, you don't name a team after something you don't respect and fear. And it's kind of a bummer because the, the whole cowboy Indian thing used to be a big part of American culture, particularly at the turn of the century. Not not like not historically, but just like just people were into it, and the kids in the fifties and sixties, you know, would be cowboys and Indians, and that was a big thing. And uh, and to kind of erase that, I mean, I understand how having the term the word skin can can imply an offensive thing, but it was never ever intended to be that way. For eighty seven years, that was never the intent. But anyway, yeah, totally thin skins, exactly. So. Um, but yeah, Redskins are my team, man. I've been, I've been a Redskin fan since I was seven years old. I mean, when I lived in D.C., you know, it was like, that's when I heard, learned about football. And it's pretty much a heartbreaking. Although they won some Super Bowls in the 80s. They won, I think, two in the 80s and one in the 90s. Uh, if it weren't for the 49ers, they would have been the most successful team in the 80s. Um, but 49ers were, like, on fire. So... Uh, so, so basically, like I said, E, F is a half step. So if it's a half step, that means one fret. Um, and uh, hold on a second. Let me just, okay, we're, we're doing pretty good. We're doing good. 45 people watching. So one fret means one fret. Every, and then B, C is two frets. I mean, sorry, B, C is also one fret. So if we're going from E to F or F to E, we're only going to move one fret. If we're going from B to C and or C to B, we're only going to do one fret. All the others are two frets or whole steps, okay? So just in review, the bottom string is E, okay? First fret is F. And the funny thing is it kind of lines up with your markers on the guitar, and then it doesn't. So don't, don't let the markers really help you much. Uh, then F to G is a whole step, so you go up two frets. G to A is our whole one of the whole steps, so go up two more frets. A to B is a whole step, and then B to C that's the half step. And see that's where we get off our markers right here. And then C to D is a whole step, D to E is a whole step, and if we keep going E to F that would be another half step, right? Okay, let's do that again. E, F. You can just do it with your first finger because that's actually part of the exercise because we're gonna build power chords around them. F G, A. B, half step to C, whole step to D, whole step to E. If you want, we can do it again. 
And I would, if you're gonna do this, think the chord that you're playing. So you know, E5, F5, G5, A5, B5, C5, D5, E5. Okay, let's do it chromatically now. Okay, check this out. E5, and E5 you could do like this, or as a second finger, however you wanna do it. F5, okay, F sharp five, or G5. Go down a fret, that's G flat five. Go back to G5. Up a fret, G sharp five. More commonly, go up a fret, A five. More commonly, we would call that A flat five. G sharp is an unusual chord, but A flat's more common. Back up to A. Sixth fret is A sharp or B flat. Go up to B, go down to B flat. Okay, so sharp raises it a fret, flat lowers it a fret. Okay, and then here we go. We're at the seventh fret, that's B five. Half step to C5, half step to C sharp 5, um, half step to D5, back down a half step to D flat 5, back to D5, D sharp 5, up to E5, 12th fret, down to the 11th, E flat 5. Now here's the thing, don't worry, there won't be a quiz on the sharps and flats, okay? Just get the other ones. You. If you learn the, the, the seven, the main seven notes here, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and E, if you learn those um, and you understand what a flat does and what a sharp does, then you, you should be able to construct um, an, a B flat five chord if you know where B is. Okay? Um, okay, so let's do a little bit of quiz because uh, there'll be a quiz on this. You can order these. On. <laughs> I should make one. There'll be a quiz on this just so you have the option. Um, anyway, so the. Uh, That's a good question, Bonnie. Do I have a story? You don't want to hear a story. You're just you're just yanking my chain. Okay, so let's quiz on this a little bit. Okay, um, and now we don't need to make power chords. Uh, well, we might as well. Okay, F F five, G five, F five. G5, A5, G5, F5, A5, F5, G5. <laughs> yeah, Diane, is there anything on the list? A5, B5, A5, G5. F5, G5, F5, A5, F5, B5, F5, G5, A5, B5, C5, B5, A5, G5. F5, C5, or no, sorry, G5, F5, A5, F5, B5, F5, C5, uh, F5, G5, A5, B5, C5, D5, C5, B5, A5, G5, F5, G5, F5, A5, F5, B5, F5, C5, F5, D5. Ah, tried not looking. 
<laughs> F5. G5. A5. B5. C5. I can tell everybody's doing the work here. D5. E5. There we go. Let's go ahead and get F up here. Back down to E5. D5. C5. B5. A5. G5. And F5. I mean, yeah, F5. G5. F5. A5. F5. Am I going too fast? B5. F5. C5. F5. You may not, shouldn't have to look at the F5, but the D5, you're gonna have to probably glance down at. F5. E5. I'm always impressed with somebody who can't, doesn't have to ever look at their fretboard. Uh, F5. And then F5 on top. Okay? E5. F5. D5. F5. C5. F5. B5. F5. Sounds like a song, doesn't it? C, uh, A5. Up here to the A, F5 again? G5. F5. And down to the bottom F5. Okay, F5. A5. G5. B5. A5. C5. B5. D5. Sorry. C5, almost done. E5, and go up to F5. Okay, we can stop there. You get what I'm doing. I'm mixing, I'm not really mixing it up too random. I'm just kind of doing some patterns, adding a new one, at, incorporating that. Um, doing the big jumps, you know. And you can just do that. Not very musical, but it gives you. It'll help you kind of see all the all the frets, um, all the positions of all those chords. All right. Now, if we do this on the A string, it's going to be a little tougher because um, we have to miss the bottom string. Remember, so you're going to really have to tighten your right hand up. And the first chord we're going to have is B5 at the second fret. So your first finger is on the second fret, and your third finger is on the uh, on the fourth fret. And we're just going to do. Um, we're just going to do the, the two note power chord, so B5 to C5, B, okay, so but let's get the notes first, let's do first finger, so first finger on the B, I'm going to take a sip, because I'm thirsty. Oh yeah, I, I know guys that can do that without looking, yeah. I, I think part of that, um, if I really only played one guitar, if I had one guitar that I played all the time and that was it, you know, my main axe, or if I've only played strats or something, and they were all the same scale. I probably could do that. I just don't have enough confidence. Um, and, you know, if you're doing your own band and you're playing live and you're trying to put on a show, yeah, looking down at your hands is, you know, all the time is not going to be part of the show. But if it's your own music and you kind of mess up or whatever, or you'll write music where you don't have to do these giant jumps. And it's, it's pretty rare to do those kind of jumps in a song. Um, usually you're moving by one or two or three frets at a time on a chord, you know. I mean, when I was doing those dyads, it's with great fear and trepidation that I'm moving. I'm, uh, see, I, meant I was short. Um, and if I'm standing up, it's different than if I'm sitting down. So if you practice, if you only practice standing up, and you played the same guitar every day, you probably wouldn't have a problem with it. You'd eventually get to the point where you would never have to look at your hands. Uh, but because I'm playing different guitars every day in different instruments every day. I mean, yesterday I played, at church we, we recorded, um, I could probably upload this picture, but um, I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. That was kind of my setup yesterday. So I've got, I've got that dulcimer that I just bought. I brought that. I use that. I brought my fretless ukulele, which I didn't use. Um, I had my 
that's my baritone, that's my dobro, that's my 50, uh, 24 Martin, and there's the Taylor 12 string, and I played the mandolin too. So I played all of these. Wait a minute, did I play? Oh, I didn't play the dobro. Um, but yeah, so you can see we were set up. There's a better, maybe a better picture, I don't know. Um, but we were recording an unplugged set this week. So you can see my view basically when we were recording. I could post these up on the Discord, I suppose. Um, socially distancing. Uh, wearing masks when we weren't recording for the most part. Um, so on the, uh, we'll start on the B note on the A string. I'm not going to worry about the open A string, the open. Uh, but so that's going to be B, and then B to C is a half step, remember? So one fret up, then C to D is one of the whole steps, so two frets. D to E is one of the whole steps. E, F, Hutton is a half step. So one fret to F, and then two frets to G. Two frets to A, there's our A. And we go all the way up to B if we want. So the 14th fret would be B. And back down to A. A to G is a whole step, so we go down two frets. G to F is a whole step, so we go down two frets. F to E is a half step, so we go down one fret. E, uh, e to uh, D is a whole step. D to C is a whole step. And C to B is a whole half step. Okay. So, uh, let's do B. B5. C5. Up two frets, D5. Up two frets to E5. Up one fret to F5. So we're at the eighth fret. Tenth fret is, is G5, right? Then A5. We might as well go all the way up to B5. On acoustic, you might have troubles with this. I understand. Don't worry about it. You go back down to this one if you want. And then we go to A5, G5 at the tenth fret. Down two frets to F. F to E is a half step, so one fret. Uh, e to D is a whole step, two frets. D to C is a whole step, and then D C to B. That's what I do all day. I just write little hooks like that for TV. <laughs> and they hopefully use them. Okay. So I did another one too earlier that was like, damn, that's cool. I forget what it was. Um, so that was kind of a harmonic minor thing. So let's go B, B5, second fret, to C5. Back to B5. To C5. Up to D5. Back to C5. B5. B, uh, D5. B5, C5, D5, E5, D5, C5, B5, C5, B5, D5, B5, E5, B5. C5, D5, E5, F5, remember one fret there, back to E5, one fret down, D5, C5, B5, C5, B5, D5, C, uh, B5, E5, B5, F5, B5, E5, B5, D5, B5, C5, B5. Okay, let's go to C5, D5, E5. E to F, E F Hutton, 
half step, G5, back down to F, whole step, half step down to E, whole step down to D, whole step down to C, and then half step down to B5, C5, B5, D5, B5. You're gonna know B5. You're gonna know B5 and F. You're gonna have those two down. We're doing it a billion times. Okay, E5. You hit the low E on that one if you want. And then E, uh, B5. Up to F5. There's our tritone. Very, very. <laughs> okay, and then your kids are gonna come over and they're gonna be like, why are you playing? <laughs> What are you playing? Okay, B5, G5, way up at the 10th fret, back down to B5, up to A5, at the 12th fret. Did we go, well, we're there now. Okay, let's go up to B5, up to it, up a whole step. Down to C5, up to B5, I'm sorry, I said C5, A5, sorry, B5. Down to G5 at the 10th fret, back up to B5 down to F5 at the 8th fret, okay, up to B5, down to E5, okay, if you want to go down to this B5, D5, B5, C5, and down to B5 and we'll stop. Yeah, we can say that's a sippable offense, sure, why not? We're all trying to stay hydrated. Okay, so um, I will scan. Um, oh, here's a, just another interesting thing. Um, these are, of course, really hot pickups, right? And they're not they're not Les Paul, but they're probably as hot as well. They're probably as hot as those uh, the pickups I have in the SG. Um, but single coil pickups. And these are very weak pickups, but I like them. You know, me and, me and cheap squires. With a lot of gain, won't sound any different. Um, they really don't sound much different. So, like, if I go to this sound here, uh, the big gain, the huge gain one, I call wide power. gain on that one you know like as, oh it's the pickups not necessarily there's so much gain on that that you really won't hear the nuance of the guitar you could pretty much plug any guitar this one's gonna be a little bit on the brighter side but it's still gonna be just as gainy If I were to switch over to, oops, what am I doing here? Uh, if I were to switch over to one of the cleaner sounds, then you would definitely hear. It's definitely thinner than the, which I kind of like that. It's very poppy, especially in the octave. A very poppy sound. I like. I like using this one. I did a. A punk rock thing for Apex Legends, and because uh, one of the new characters is kind of punk rock from India, so I had to play sitar and punk rock guitar on the same character, and um, uh, I used this guitar for the punk rock sound because I, you know, punk rockers, you know, they didn't have a lot of money; they were just garage bands basically going crazy. So I thought, you know, if I use too refined of a guitar for that. I'm, wouldn't be as authentic, I thought. And so they they really, the, um, the producer really, really, really liked the sound. So that was good. That worked out. Um, they love everything I do. <laughs> I'm not going to say I could do no wrong. Okay, so because that, that's the surest sign that I'm going to do something wrong. Uh, 
So let's see here. I've got to scan this. Uh, these are the power cords. Um, and yeah, I didn't write the super power cord on here. Um, I can write that on there. Why not, right? I did a video on that, in fact. So if you go to my videos and look up, I think it's super power cord or uh, an Australian and power cord, you should find that video. But the super power cord is this. Very spread out. So it's very difficult if you're not already a pretty good player. And I play it with the, some players might play it with the second finger here and third finger. It just depends on how you like to do the stretch. I prefer to reach out with my pinky for some reason, but most guitar players prefer to do it the other way. Um, so you could put two there. Your second finger there. Okay, and this is super. And that's my, that's my name. I kind of made it up out of necessity to try to get a sound I was looking for and I ended up keeping it in my keeping it in my arsenal. Arse and all for all you Brits. Okay, let's see. So how's everyone doing today? I so I need a story. Did did uh did wait a minute. Oh I'm touching my face. Did, what's her name? Uh, did Diane ever answer that question? Where did the question go? Is it that? Have you guys been talking that much since that question? Did I bring gum for the whole class? <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Diane. Okay, so there's the question, and that was from Bruce. Yeah, Frank, I answered your question. Um, that was probably, yeah, you're right, Gary. That was, this, I, I, I would call it a, I, we don't need to add it to the list, but. Uh, yeah, you, in fact, you can use this video, just bookmark the time stamp, and um, you can go right to the exercises for both. The, in fact, if somebody wants to put those time stamps in a, in a comment, I'll add them to the, or the, they'll just automatically be in the comments. Um, Oh, that's good, Charlie. Okay, that that's good. Uh, Dan seems to be missing. <laughs> I don't know. Well, there's maybe a story there. Maybe why don't I make up a story why why Dan is missing? <laughs> I could have her be a spy, or I could have it be that her cat just threw up all over the floor and she's got to clean it up and she hasn't been paying attention. Uh, chat's been quiet for twenty minutes. Well, the chat's quiet for twenty minutes because everybody was doing what I was telling them to do. We were, we were practicing. So I, let me scan this doc here. I got to open up this stupid software here. There wasn't, okay. And then I'm, I'm signing a legal doc today. I always love signing those. Um, hiring, have to hire lawyers to look over the contract. I'm signing a, um, an admin deal with Universal Music Group Publishing so they can collect my monies for me. Make me rich beyond my wildest dreams. Um, okay, exit, save as PDF, call it power. Oh, good, okay, power chords. Already lined up in the right folder. And, uh, oh, let me post the Discord link again, right? Okay, I gotta come up with a new new one because that one's probably expired. Boy, I gotta shave my beard, it's itchy. Okay, here's, here's the link for Discord. And I'm going there right now and uploading a PDF in uh, Tom's bookmarks. It's gonna be the power cord one. Desktop, live stream, power cords, PDF. And this time I'll remember to hit the upload button. Last time I didn't hit the upload button. So I logged out and it was still there. Um, let's see. Okay, now. Okay, cool. 122. Oh, uh, hour 22. Okay. 
Sweet. Thanks. Thanks, Bruce. If you want to, you could make that a comment um, in the actual once I'm these because these this will be there, but people wouldn't get to it until then. But if you want to put the those numbers in a comment, do you know how to create um, a uh, a link in YouTube that takes you directly to um, when you when you watch a YouTube video, say halfway through the video is where you want people to see. You don't want them to have to wait through 10 minutes of talking or whatever. Um, you can go to that point, hit stop, create, uh, there's a, there's a little box you can clip. It says, uh, I think it says timestamp or something like that and click, clip that and it'll add the number of seconds to you at the end of your URL, which is really cool. It's like, it'll say something, then something equals. And if it's say 10 minutes in, that would be 600 seconds. Um, and that's, it's pretty darn, it's pretty darn cool. That way you don't have to watch the whole video to get there. You'll still probably get an ad, which is good for me. Uh, but so for like an hour and six minutes in, it'll say <laughs> 10 million seconds or whatever. But it's a, it's a great little trick if you want to, someone to hear a specific moment in a video instead of having to go, oh, go to this, you know, you know it's, it saves time. So if, I'm sure many of you already knew that trick. All right, so I think we're done here. Uh, Friday, let's see, Friday, what's happening Friday, Friday, Friday? Ooh, I, well, we'll see. Uh, I'm maybe working on a record Friday. So um, uh, if I am, I am working from home, which is good. Um, and if I start working early, which is unlikely, oh, I got a lot of emails. Oh, okay. I got a DocuSign. Okay. I got to sign this and send a bunch of money to a lawyer. Okay. Um, if I, um, uh, um, if I do have a session, I'll log in, um, at the very least and, uh, and, and let you know if, the, the the producer I'm working for, generally, we don't start early on things, so it'll probably happen at noon at the soonest. Um, but knowing him, we'll probably want to get coffee and everything. So uh, if, if that happens on Friday for sure, um, then I will um, at least log in at 11 because it will be here if we're in the middle of working, if we do happen to get started early. I'll log in and just say, hey, no, no less than a day, sorry, and then um, I'll see you. Maybe I'll do Saturday instead or something like that, okay? And I'll say that in the video. Otherwise, uh, um, I'll see you Friday, and uh, everybody take care. Oh, I didn't get to a story. Um, oh, yay. Friday, your sons are coming up for dinner. That's awesome. T yeah, tomorrow? No, we don't. The boys were over yesterday, but um, they didn't stay for dinner. Let's see. Uh, I'm trying to think. I didn't have a story. Um... Uh, I, I have a story that potentially about this artist that I'm working with on Friday. Um, uh, the um, he, uh, He's a pretty big artist in Mexico. His name is Marco Antonio Solis. And people call him Marco Antonio, I think. And um, I got called to play on... I've told this story before because I, t I talk about this is why I bought my Martin. Um, but I... Uh, went to the session and basically what it was was a medley of his songs and I probably should have done a little more research on his music I didn't realize how big he was um, and uh, the um, uh, <laughs> pepper took to me um, the um, so I, I, I you know I went to the session um, I go into the, we're, it was at Conway, which is a great studio in Hollywood. It's on, um, I think it's on Santa Monica or Melrose. A beautiful studio, really, really nice grounds. Uh, I've done a few sessions there. And um, I get there and, and I'm all set up, ready to go. And I, I plop down next to uh, someone on a sofa. 
and I reach out my hand. I said, hi, I'm Tom. What's your name? He goes, I'm Marco. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you're the artist. <laughs> and I was like, at that moment, I realized, dang, I needed to do, I'm usually pretty good about researching stuff. And I don't know if it was because I was, uh, maybe I got called last minute. I don't think I was called last minute. And I was just playing acoustic on it. James Hera was playing electric on it. Um, and it was all overdub. So I, you know, James Hera was packing up when I got there. Um, and uh, who was playing drums? It was J.R. Robinson, who's a great drummer, played like on, I think he's on all the, he's on Thriller, and he's played with a million people. He's a great drummer. Um, in fact, he's this producer's favorite drummer, so he may very well be on this album as well. Uh, but because we're, all, we're not able to go in studios right now, um, we're going to be doing remote recording. So I get a good enough sound here in my studio that we can, we can record acoustics here. And then... Um, uh, uh, who else was that? See, was it Brian? Uh, who was the bass player? It was someone pretty big. And James Hera. And then my friend Pablo played all the keyboards. Um, and it was for a TV show. And it was for a big medley. It was like a 15-minute medley of his hits. So I only had to play a little bit of each song, but it was like, I didn't know the songs. And that the charts were written well enough I didn't have to, but I should have, I should have, I didn't, well, it would have been hard because he, he writes all his own music and he has hundreds of songs. Um, and I think the metal medley was primarily his hits, but even that, he's probably got 30 hits. So it would have been really tough for me to kind of know that catalog inside and out for one session that didn't pay that much. Um, but uh, that's my story. And that's who I'm uh, um, working for remotely on Friday, I think, if it, if it all goes as planned. Um, and the producer, Pablo, is one of my best friends. We've been friends for years and years and years. Um, and uh, we've been prayer partners for a long time. So he's, <laughs> we pray for each other through thick and thin. So anyway, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Um, and uh, if you feel so inclined, click the Amazon links and buy some stuff. Uh, and then um, I'll, I will uh, end up maybe buy a mug. <laughs> I'll check and see if anyone, any more of these have sold. I haven't sold many. I think my total income so far is something like $20, which isn't bad. I'm not complaining, but uh, it just, it just kind of cracks me up. Uh, but I do have another design that I think I posted, but I'm gonna, I changed it. Uh, that's got a little guitar that my daughter drew. Um, and it will say, don't, I think it's, it's either gonna say, don't worry, there won't be a quiz on this, because I say that, right? Or she wrote, don't fret, which is pretty funny. So it may say, don't fret, there won't be a quiz on this. So I'll, uh, I, I, I'm not sure which way I'm going to go on it. But in fact, I've got to scan her drawings before they get coffee on them or something so that I have them in PDF form. Okay, so uh, yeah, Solis is great and he's big. Um, I, and I played on um, one of his entire record um, a couple of records ago. Well, it was years ago now. Um, so, uh, yeah, and super nice guy. Played foosball with him. <laughs> he loves foosball. I think that's why we went to uh, the studio we recorded three days in a row at was, um, oh, yeah, scam likely. Uh, three days in a row. Uh, that, was, uh, that was East West, and that's also in Hollywood on Sunset. Great studio. Really weird, though, because they, they hired this like contemporary artist to, to decorate it. And so it's got some like the weirdest, you know, weirdest stuff around. And the furniture is like, really? You want me to sit in that? But the studios are pretty normal. And the room that we had is really, really cool because it's got, you know, it's a big, long room. Wood, it just smells so good. The old wood with the humidity, you know, they keep the humidity up and everything. It smells so good. And then uh, there's a staircase going to the top. And up there they had the foosball table. So we were spending a lot of time up there playing foosball. And then I have to be careful because I don't want to hurt my hands. And you get, you get going and you just forget to guard your fingers. And, and the, uh, underneath the, foot, the, the balcony where the foosball table was, was where, the, uh, where Luis Conte, who's one, a, a good friend of mine, percussion player, he tours with James Taylor. Um, he had his setup in there in the glass room. So that was really cool. Um, and Michael Thompson played electric. I played acoustic. Uh, Pablo played keys. It was uh, Walter Rodriguez from Church that played drums on it. And it was a uh, great bass player, John Pena on bass. Really, really good bass player. Uh, great tone. Like, hits one note and it's like, whoa, that's an amazing sound. He's just got the sound. Um, 
And uh, so, uh, but that's that's kind of where we're at. Uh, that's what um, I'm, I'm going to be working on. Oh, yeah, so that's, but unfortunately, we're not getting to go to the studio, which actually for me is good because I can't bring a thousand guitars to the studio. So I like being able to, uh, bye, David. I like being able to um, uh, have all my tools at, at the ready. So I'm even looking at upgrading a microphone. I want to get a new microphone. Um, I found one that at the NAMM show that I, I like. The only problem is it's like $5,000. Um, and so I'm trying to say, yeah, I need write-offs, but one, one mic, that's a lot of money. So this one was about $1,500, so it's not a cheap mic. Um, and this one I really, really like. Uh, and everybody's, I'm not getting any complaints, so I don't necessarily need to change mics. Um, and that's a big risk, you're buying a, a microphone that expensive and then not knowing if it's going to be like an upgrade or not. Um, I could rent it. I could rent one for a day and see if I really like it. I may do that. Um, that's also right offable. So, um, but and the rent might apply to the purchase. I don't know. We'll see. I I record on Logic, if that's what you're referring to, Frank. I use Logic, um, and I use Apogee uh, Apogee uh, DA converters and AD AD and DA converters. And uh, logic, and pretty simple as that. You know, I'm, I, um, I really don't, um, and I'm running through, um, the, the microphone is going through a Neve uh, 1073 channel, um, and then that's it. So it's right into the Duet, and then, or right into the Apogee. And then um, I will put reverb and compression and EQ on my guitars. Um, I try to go easy on the EQ because I want to make sure I get the mic in the right position. And sometimes if you make the EQ too sweet sounding, um, you will not get a good basic sound. So I, I try to go easy on the EQ, maybe just rolling off the bottoms and the tops a little bit. Um, but, um, you know, we'll see. It's, this is going to be interesting because the, I know who's probably going to mix it. This album is, he's very, very, very particular. So I'm a little worried that, you know, you know, you can chop off things and everything, but I'm worried he's going to say, oh, I can hear your hard drive spinning, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, so I may actually have to, like, put my hard drives on the floor uh, so they're as far away from the mic as possible. But, uh, you know, my goal is to, is, to, is to have everything approved first out. Um, but anyway, so the story was kind of me meeting Marco and saying, hi, I'm Tom, who are you? <laughs> Not knowing my client, that was the story. Uh, usually most of my stories are about me being stupid. So uh, I was, uh, yeah, it was basically uh, just sitting down next to the artist that I was working for, who was a pretty big artist, and saying, hi, I'm Tom, who are you? And I, all I needed to do was Google his name, and I would have recognized him, but I didn't do that. So that was my story. Until I come up with something, I, I'll come up with a better one, hopefully for the next time we're together. Uh, who knows? Okay, well, listen, I will talk to you soon. Yeah, I put, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about if I, if I actually keep losing weight, I'm losing weight right now. If I keep losing weight, I'll put a link up to the, the milkshake that I, or not the milkshake, it's just a, a, one of those shakeable shakes um, uh, that, um, I'm using, that I'm using basically for lunch and breakfast. So I'm not eating anything until dinner. And I've lost about 10 pounds. So... In about a little over two weeks. I always lose, when I do this, I always lose the most weight at the beginning, and then you hit a wall, and then it's just like, ugh. So, and I did eat, on my birthday, I did eat breakfast and lunch that day, or this the day after, because we were out of town, and I didn't want to bring the shake with me. And of course, the next day when I did the shakes, I was hungry at three, and like, oh, I'm so hungry. Uh, but yesterday, I wasn't, so that's good. So I'm hoping today won't be, yeah, so... You're welcome, Pepper, for the lesson on power chords. Uh, very, very, very standard common thing for everybody to use. So hopefully all you electric players will use it. The acoustic players can totally use it too. And it's, you, I'm sure we can find power chords in just about every style of music. Um, and I didn't mention the fact that they, I was started to and I didn't finish, but um, I was talking about music theory in high school. And we were taught uh, in music theory that parallel fifths and parallel octaves were no-no. So when we were doing voice harmoni harmoniz when we were harmonizing melodies we weren't allowed to have parallel octaves and fifths which is all power chords are so it's just funny uh in in choir pieces you, gregorian chant you would have it but see modern um 
modern or not modern, I don't want to say modern because music theory, you know, the music theory from the 17th century on started to stipulate away from that, that that was a no-no because I think they were trying to get people not to make everything sound like Gregorian chant. So, but, it, but it, power chords are in Gregorian chant. So you're like, what other styles of music? <laughs> Gregorian chant. Anyway, God bless you guys. I'll talk to you soon and sorry to run on at the end here, but uh, we'll, we'll, uh, We'll pick up on Friday, hopefully, if not for a long time, just for a minute, and then I'll see you either on the weekend or on Monday for sure. Okay? Bye-bye.